The seven star terror raid event for Torterra is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we're going to cover all of the details as well as the best solo build to help you beat this in your game. The event itself is running from the 15th of November until the 17th for its first time out. And of course, like other seven star terror raids, it will make a repeat appearance from the 22nd until the 24th. This time for its second time out will be accompanied by Blissey Terror Raids. So the build that we're featuring in today's video. Now, trust me with this because it feels like it wouldn't work, but it is going to be Haunter. Ghost, Poison type. It has the Terror Typing of Grass. Eevee All Light is the Held Item. That's going to give you a defense boost and a special defense boost by 50% because you're holding it level 100 and hyper trained, of course. Now, the move set is going to be Clear Smog, Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, and then Giga Drain. Make sure that you do PP max the Giga Drain just in case you need to. EV spread is pretty straightforward, 252 EVs in HP and in defense with a modest nature. The remaining EVs, of course, put into special attack. The big important thing here is its ability, Levitate. And we'll get into the raid now and I'll show you how you can easily solo 7 Star Torterra with a Haunter. So when you first come into the raid, we're going to have a turn zero like we've not seen for a long time. The Torterra is going to launch off a Shell Smash that's going to boost its attack and its special attack and speed by two stages and give it a drop of minus one to its defense and special defense. Straight after this, it's going to nullify the stat drops on its side of the field, nullifying those drops, just keeping the attack boosts that it's got. So hitting pretty hard, it's going to outspeed you as well. But turn one, we're going to lock in with a clear smog. That's going to wipe all of the boosts that the Torterra's just gained. Okay, so that's going to get rid of those. Now, you might be worrying here because it's just used Smackdown on us. So we're actually grounded. We don't have our Levitate ability anymore. But fortunately for us, the AI will never lock in with Earthquake and Earth Power. Even though we are grounded, it will still somehow register the Levitate ability as being active. And the only moves it will revert to using are going to be Smackdown and the Woodhammer throughout the entire raid. So we're kind of fine going ahead. So turn two, turn three, after we've used that clear smog, we're just going to go for those acid sprays. It's going to fire off the Woodhammers. It's going to fire off Smackdowns. We're fine. We can terrestrialize on turn four. We're going to do that and we're going to launch off our third and final acid spray as well. Get it down to minus six special defense so we're maxing it out we're not going to set up our nasty plots yet because we're going to wait on the turn where it does nullify the stats and abilities on our side of the field that will then free us up to go for those nasty plots get ourselves to plus six we're then going to have to wait for it to nullify the stat drops on its side of the field it's going to go for one more shell smash as well but we'll get to that in a moment so there we go with that last acid spray and again it's going to just revert to going for those smackdowns now after we've used three acid sprays we're going to lock in with a Giga Drain. Now it's going to nullify the stats on our side of the field, which is ideal. We'll lock in with that Giga Drain here just to recover some health as well and get some damage onto the field early on. And that's going to be able to kind of help us set up for the rest of this raid as well. Get those nasty plots set up because once we're at plus six, once we get it down to minus six, it's going to be pretty quick from there on out. Now we don't have an Intimidator on our side of the field. It does help you out a bunch. We do have... Drift Blame, it has thrown Will-O-Wisp out onto the, the Torterra, so that's great because that uh, half in the attack means that we're taking less damage, but you don't necessarily need it. Now, after that initial Giga Drain, we're going to lock in with our Nasty Plots, and this is where we're going to start setting ourselves up because we're waiting at this stage as well for it to nullify the stats and abilities on its side of the field. We're probably going to have to use one Clear Smog. Now, just keep an eye on your HP stat here. If you're taking a lot of damage throughout the raid, then just launch a Giga Drain off at any point because... You're going to want to keep yourself the health scale healthy as possible. Now, it is going to nullify its stats on its side of the field, getting rid of those acid sprays. So we're going to have to get the acid sprays back onto it again. But like you can see, it's just going to lock in with those smackdowns. And there's the shell smash here. So this is the turn where we're going to have to lock in with our clear smog the next turn after this, just to make sure we get rid of those. And then we're going to outspeed it again. And then we'll be able to go for that Giga Drain just to recover health off. We're still plus four at the minute. We need to get one more nasty plot up. But we'll lock in with that Clear Smog. This is the turn. So we'll take a Woodhammer for our trouble. Just about hanging on. Hopefully you're in a bit better uh, health-wise than we are in that situation. Don't worry, we're not going to go down just yet. We'll eliminate all of those stat boosts that it's just had. We'll Giga Drain now. We're still plus four, remember. So we'll outspeed this stage. Recover all that health off that we've lost. 
and then we're in that position to get that last nasty plot up get us to plus six and then we can concentrate on kind of weaving in those acid sprays to get it to minus six so you can see the wood hammer not doing as much damage after that shell smash boost has been taken away we'll go for that final nasty plot here and now we're safe knowing that we will outspeed the torterra every turn as well which is a nice bonus for us because it outspeeding us makes it very difficult in this raid the wood hammer there and like i say just keep an eye on your hp if you're getting low don't risk it uh but we want to get those three acid sprays off once again but that's all we're going to do we're going to get those Special defense is down to minus six, so we need three of them. And then after that, we're going to be able to lock this raid up. But like I say, when you're doing these acid sprays, you're weaving them in between Giga Drains because you want to keep yourself as healthy as possible. You don't want to get knocked out at this stage and lose your terrestrialization because losing your terrestrialization, the Giga Drain is not going to be as powerful. So just use them as and when you can in the raid. You may not need to go for all three acid sprays because you're plus six special attack. So um you just kind of have to judge it as you're going through the raid but just follow the kind of setup that we've done throughout hey here we'll go for another acid spray we're healthy enough to do so of course but as you can see it's not locking in at all to the earthquake or the earth power and i've ran this raid back through so many times just to make sure because i'm kind of unsure on putting this out because it just feels like it shouldn't work but the ai just will not lock in to the earth power or earthquake even after the smackdown so the whole resonance of the uh, the, the move set doesn't really make sense because it kind of puts you off bringing those levitate users to the battle but essentially um you are kind of fine even if you do so we'll have a look at the stats on the torterra it's minus six we're plus six and we'll be able to fire off that giga drain and this should break the shield and put it in range for us to knock it out the turn after and Although it is a slower setup, the raid time is still in a healthy position and this is definitely faster than I think any of the other solo builds that I've seen so far. Um, and you're going to have an easy time with the, the Haunter, to be honest, if you do use it in battle. And you can see we've got no Intimidator on our side of the field. So this just gets easier and quicker if you've got an Intimidate partnering Pokemon that's going to allow you to beat the Torterra uh, through this weekend. I've ran through a bunch of these raids uh, with the Haunter, it feels like the best one, um, easiest one to do it with. Just a little bit where you're going to have to change the terrestrialization type on it, um, but it's an accessible Pokemon that's available in the base games, and you're all going to have an easy time beating Torterra because the AI just will not lock in with the Earth Power and Earthquake. So it's the build to use. Let me know what ball you catch the Torterra in, and obviously we do have the Herba Mystica drops as well this weekend, so hopefully if you're farming it, you get lucky with those drops. And of course, as always, if there is a faster build out there that we find, I will post it on the channel. But at this point in time, I feel like the Haunter is the most reliable build for this raid. If you found the build in today's video useful, please consider dropping a like on the video and do consider sharing it around in the community as well to help those who might be having a tougher time with this raid event. If you've got your own builds, of course, as usual, do drop them down in the comment section below to help others as well as let me know what you've been running and having success with. Hope you have a lot of fun with the event over the weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the builds. Good luck if you're farming for those Herba Mysticas, and I'll catch you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.